All right guys, so this video is gonna be a little different. It's something I've wanted to touch on for quite a while now for a few reasons, and I just didn't wanna include it in a vlog where it gets lost because there's so much information on the topic that I feel it deserves its own dedicated video. So the topic is Ranger School, my experience, what you can expect, and it's really aimed towards people that are going to Ranger School or wanna know what to expect from the school itself. Um, when I was preparing to go to the school, you know, I would do searches all over line. I couldn't find anything. There was like one video on YouTube from this National Guard guy who gave some pretty good information, but it was literally the only thing on there other than the Surviving the Cut documentary that they filmed at Ranger School. So I wanted to make one dedicated on my experience to help you guys out. I spent so much time looking for like tips and tricks on how to pass the school before going. And the biggest things I realized when getting there and graduating is there's like three things that really matter. One, just don't quit. If you don't quit, you'll keep going as long as you don't fail something twice. Two, everything you need to know is in this thing right here. This is the Ranger Handbook. They give you one of these when you get to the school. They teach everything out of this book. And everything you're expected to do there, they teach you how to do it. And the third thing is go in the best shape possible. And that's what I'm gonna lead into right now, preparation for the school physical-wise. So my preparation might be a little different from most. Uh, what I was doing is I was in the infantry officer basic course right before going into ranger school. So it's a 17 week course and eight of those weeks you're in the field, you're doing PT Monday through Friday. It's almost like you're at your regular unit, but the training in the, the PT is more aimed towards ranger school. As soon as I graduated that course, I went right into ranger school. So my preparation was really different from most people. A lot of people weren't working out during our infantry officer basic course. They were kind of taking it easy and they were putting everything off until the last minute, getting in shape. So they were doing all these ruck marches. They were trying to increase their push-ups, their sit-ups, um, their, their two mile time, bringing that down, their five mile time, bringing that down as well. And they were bringing all of this so close to before they were going to the actual school that they were almost burnt out by the time they got there. Me, I did it a little smarter. I had a strategy and you need to have a strategy when preparing to go to ranger school, physical wise. For me, I did one ruck march a week, which would range from four miles to 12 miles. Usually we did this with the infantry officer basic course. If we didn't, I did it on my own. And I did 35 pounds. The main reason I did ruck marches, it wasn't just getting used to carrying the weight, but it was getting my feet used to carrying the weight, being in boots for that amount of time. Um, and that's what I was most worried about is keeping your feet healthy during ranger school will put you ahead of so many peers. For the ruck march itself, what I was doing to improve on that is deadlifts and squats. So I was still lifting weights about six times a week and my training is the same as it is now. It was kind of half powerlifting focused strength training and then half volume hypertrophy, the bodybuilding style workouts. I was doing this to build endurance in the muscles as well as building strength and just dense muscle mass because I knew I already had a, a really strong lower back I had strong legs and that's what really helped me during ruck marches when we did it with the infantry officer basic course. And I knew if I sustained that in the preparation up to ranger school, it would be clutch and it would help me out a lot. So I tapered my training from about 12 weeks out up until the day of ranger school where I slowly lowered volume. So I lowered the amount of times I was ruck marching, the frequency, I was lowering the amount of weights I was lifting up into the school so that when I got there, I was fresh. A lot of people getting there were already experiencing injuries from you know, previous weightlifting or running incidents, or they were just really tired and burnt out. By the time they got there, they were extremely exhausted. Me, I was fresh, I was ready to go. I tapered that training, and you'll see a lot of people do this for bodybuilding competitions, powerlifting. I applied the things I already knew. I used that to my advantage, tapered my training, and then went into Ranger School fresh. So I did one ruck march a week, and the length varied depending on how I was feeling. I did one three mile run every three days and it was primarily on hills. So I was just pushing myself as fast as possible, as hard as possible for three miles. I never went over three miles. I was trying not to break myself down. And then I continued strength training six times a week. So I think the biggest advice I can give you guys for preparation of ranger school is have a strategy going into it. Keep volume high months out. And as you get closer to the actual school, Start to taper that so you can stay healthy and be ready when you're going into wrap week. Okay, my experience itself within the school. Uh, so I started February 23rd, 2014. 
And that class date, February 23rd, is infamous because it's the date of best ranger competition. If you start in that class and you recycle any phase once, it's a six week holdover. So I knew that going into it. If I recycled at all, I was staying at ranger school for at least another six weeks. So the first thing you do when you get to ranger school is you have wrap week. It's your ranger assessment phase, which consists of your ranger PT test, five mile run, two minutes of push ups, two minutes of sit ups, and then you have to do six pull-ups. Also within that week, you're doing a 12 mile ruck march, you're doing two obstacle courses, a water confidence test, and you're doing a land nav course, which is EIB standards. So overall, looking at the big picture, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, these are all things you're doing preparing up into ranger school, and you can do typically in the army. Most soldiers will do this. The thing though that you don't understand is you're getting smoked this entire time. So the obstacle course probably sounds like it's the easiest part of rap week. It was honestly the hardest two events. You are getting smoked to the point where you want to quit. And a lot of people do end up quitting. And that's the point of it. They want to see who's willing to push themselves as hard as possible for a limited amount of time, sometimes a long period of time, while still trying to meet the standards of all these events during rap week and still push through and finish that phase and go into the Derby phase. Rap week is tough, it's grueling, but there's not really any mental or leadership abilities applied. It's just sucking it up, not quitting, and then pushing through so you can get to the actual part of ranger school. Rap week is just an assessment. After that, after you pass that, then you're in the actual school. But rap week, as long as you can pass that physical part, the rest of ranger school, physical abilities, is just sucking it up and driving on. So here's where my experience really gets interesting. So like I said, phase one is Darby. Each phase is three weeks long. So the first week or the first couple days, it's called techniques week, where they teach you from the book, you have classes, exactly what they're expecting you to do on the missions, how they want you to do it. They literally lay it out. They give you notes. You have to write down the notes yourself, but you're expected to do everything by the standards that they teach you. It's easy or it should be easy. But when you're getting these classes, you're falling asleep, you're tired, you're not getting much sleep, you're not eating much during techniques week. Techniques week is one of the hardest weeks because you're trying to stay awake. It's almost like you're sitting in a class in a boring presentation, you're biting your lip, you're drinking water, you're nearly falling asleep and you're not able to pay attention to the information that they expect you to retain. After techniques week, that's when you go to the field and it is a 10 day field problem. Now in the first two phases, it's broken up into two five-day field problems with a day in between. The last phase of ranger school is 10 days straight. So in the field, what you can expect, now, like I said, tips and tricks will come. You will learn everything at ranger school that you need to. And the biggest resource you have is the people that recycle the phase and are reinserted and inserted into new squads. Those are like your subject matter experts on exactly how to run the missions. They tell you everything you need to know and the stuff that you missed while falling asleep in the classes they are there to help you out. And then you always have the book by your side to help you out as well. The way the field problem is run, it's 24 seven straight missions. So you wake up in the morning and the leadership is assigned. This is where it's physical. You're gonna be tired, you're gonna be walking all day with between 45 and 120 pounds on your back. That's where the tired part comes in. But this is where it's a real leadership school. And I think this is honestly the best part about Ranger School. I didn't say this when I was there. I mean, I hated the school and we talked just shit on this school. But after graduating and looking back, it's a really good school. I honestly is. The leadership abilities you learn here and that are identified are honestly great. So after you finish each phase, you find out if you passed or you failed. You can fail a bunch of different things. You can fail patrols, so running your mission, your leadership objective. You can fail by getting spot reports. So you do so many things wrong throughout the phase and they write down spot reports for you, you can fail that way. You can also fail if your peers peer you out. So you'll do peer evaluations at the end of each phase as well. And if you're under a certain percentage, you have to redo the phase because your peers just thought you sucked. And sometimes you do. There are a lot of people that just suck at the school. You can recycle each phase once for the same thing. So I recycled the first phase, Darby, which was a six week holdover because of the best ranger competition. And then I recycled the mountain phase back to back. So I spent 120 days in a 61 day course. 
I was beat. Phase two is in mountains. It's in Dahlonega, Georgia. Absolutely beautiful. So the patrols and the three weeks are set up the same way, except on this techniques week, you do a knot tying class and evaluation where you get graded on the knot so you can tie. The coolest part though is you do mountain climbing, you do rappelling off not just towers, but actual mountains. It's, it's a really cool experience. Even though I recycled this phase twice, the mountains week, the rappelling week, the techniques week was still a blast the second time. I mean, you rappel off mountains at night wearing night vision devices and you just overlook this huge valley. Um, another time you're rappelling, you're down, going down this, it's like a small waterfall where there's water trickling down and it's these huge just rocks and you're jumping down. The area is absolutely beautiful. Like you can't complain. There are people walking the Appalachian Trail by us in Georgia while we were doing our missions because the Appalachian Trail and Ranger School, Delaunay, Georgia are consolidated in the same place. So you'll see people at Ranger School, you'll see people hiking the trail. So when I failed the first phase, Darby, I mean, it was a shock, but I knew it was a learning experience. Kind of just took it with a chip on my shoulder. I sucked up the six weeks. I was recycled, did like details, and we worked for uh, the ranger instructors doing stuff. We were still in the school, but we were treated a little bit better, and we were fed a little bit more. When I failed the second phase, though, and I knew I was going to be in ranger school for an, at least another additional three weeks, that's when it like really hit me hard. And that's the point where I was like, if I fail one more phase, I'm going to quit. And I always told myself and we always told each other like, hey man, tomorrow we're going to quit. Tomorrow we're going to quit. We never did quit, but it made it that much easier when you're like, you know, we're sucking right now. And you know, everyone around you sucking. That's like the good part. You're not the only one sucking at all times. Everyone is hurting just as bad as you are. But when someone walks up to you and is like, hey man, how are you doing? I'm sucking. Let's quit tomorrow. For some reason, that's just like a motivational booster. All right, man, we'll suck it up today. We'll quit tomorrow. But when I failed the second phase, calling home on the phone with my dad. I remember being, you know, hey dad, I failed the second phase. And he asked me a question. I just felt the lump in my throat. Didn't want to say anything. I just stood by the phone. And everyone, there's like a line of like 100 people waiting to use the phone. And I just stood there waiting for that lump to go away, which felt like like 20 minutes. Recycling mountains and doing mountains over again was the hardest part of ranger school. Because at that point, I was just exhausted. My body was beat down. I was hurting. I was falling asleep all the time. And that's like the the hardest part about ranger school is trying to stay awake. I mean, you're sleeping maybe an hour, two hours a night. Some nights you're not sleeping at all. You're eating all your food typically at once at like 3 a.m. just for convenience. It's the only opportunity to get to. You get these prepackaged MREs. Um, so you're hungry, you're tired, you're losing weight. You're losing a little bit of motivation. People start getting complacent. And then when you fail a phase or you fail something, it's kind of just like knocking you down one more step. But the ability not to quit and keep going, perseverance is a huge, huge learning curve at Ranger School. And I think that's where I really developed as a person. So I finally made it to the last phase, Florida, which is at Eglin Air Force Base. Um, in Florida, it's near Pensacola, it's near Destin. The area there is beautiful as well. And the thing with the three phases, so at Fort Benning for Darby, the train is kind of like rural Pennsylvania. That's the way I best described it. There's some rolling hills. Generally, it's pretty pretty flat. Dahlonega, Florida is all mountains, and that's why it hurts so much is because people get broken off from walking up and down mountains the entire time. It's really beneficial if you can find someone that knows how to terrain associate, and while you're moving from mission to mission, you get high, a ridgeline, and as you're crossing the ridgeline, you're not going up and down. You get on the ridge, you move across, you go back down to your objective. Florida is generally flat. I mean, it was beaches. I mean, we were walking on the beach sometime, but what happened in Florida that we didn't experience in the first two phases is swamps. There were two nights where we walked through two different swamps and we walked from the time the sun went down to the time the sun went up. And I mean, chafing. That's the biggest thing I remember from the swamps, chafing. Water would change between from your, your knees up over your head sometimes where you were swimming and you're carrying all your equipment, you're carrying your weapons. The weapons were rusted completely solid after the swamps. Um, and that's like one of the worst part about Ranger School too. The swamps sucked because of the chafing and then you're expected to start the next morning and walk on the ground in wet clothes for another maybe 12 to 15 miles where it doesn't get any better. Not at all. 
but Florida is cool because in the phase, the ranger instructors are less hands-off. In the beginning of ranger school, you're expected to do everything by this book. If you deviate from the book, you're going to fail. In Florida, you need to use common sense. If you use common sense, you're going to pass. And the ranger instructors are very lenient with the way you conduct the missions as long as you accomplish the mission and it's successful. Florida is the one phase that I didn't recycle. Went straight through. Thank God. So after all of ranger school, after you finish the last patrol in Florida, they bring you back in. I weighed myself. I lost 35 pounds throughout ranger school. I went in about 215 solid muscle. And after ranger school, I was about 180. And that's after the 10,000 calorie days. So I didn't even weigh myself before that. The 10,000 calorie days are glorious in ranger school. You finish Florida. You have about three days of out processing in Florida until you go back to Fort Benning for graduation. They feed you like no other for these days. You get all your regular meals. You get MREs. They sell you hot dogs, chips, candy bars, sodas. They bring in McDonald's. They bring in Domino's pizzas. They feed you more food than you can even handle. So you get sent back to Fort Benning, Georgia, and that's where you graduate. My overall experience at Ranger School, even though while I was in it, it sucked. I mean, I hated it. I didn't enjoy it at all. And we would talk so much shit on the school and the instructors while we were there. Now that I'm pulled back from the school now, I can look back on my experience. It's been about two years since graduating. It has honestly been the best experience of my life, the most accomplishing experience of my life. And I've learned so much from that school, the instructors. The school itself is planned out and executed so properly that if I could go through it again, I probably wouldn't, but I would like to experience something similar that creates leadership opportunities like Ranger School does. Like I said, there's a bunch of tips and tricks that you can learn and you'll hear from people going into the school, but personally, I didn't really pay attention to any of this stuff because I was told when I got to the school, they will tell you exactly what you need to know and how to execute it. Use your recycles as a resource because they know what to expect. They know what is right and what is wrong. Don't deviate from this book from the beginning and use common sense as you go along. Ranger School is a tough course. I'm not going to lie. It's a hard course, but as long as you don't quit, you use common sense and you go in in some sort of physical ability, you will be okay. There's the rare occasion where people fail that shouldn't fail and people pass that shouldn't pass. I think the pass rate of Ranger School right now is maybe 40 to 50%. But if you're in the Army and you have the opportunity to go to the school, please do so. Take advantage of every opportunity you have. Hope this video helped some of you guys out. Even if you're not in the Army and you decided to watch this video and you learned something, I greatly appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.